Hey everybody. I uh, just put my yellowhead jawfish into my display tank. And um, he doesn't like the camera. It's something about when I hold this phone up. Every fish I have, just you can tell they don't like it. But anyways, as you can see, he's still building his den. Um, I had him in the quarantine for right around two weeks. Um, I got this guy from a place called Vivid Aquarium Aquariums out in California. Um, it's a really uh, good place to buy fish from what I hear on YouTube a lot. Uh, Mr. Saltwater Tank TV's YouTube channel talks about it quite a bit. Um, and so, uh, I got one from Lava Aquaria, and he seemed like he really never kind of took off, so to say. And he kind of would eat a little bit, and I, and I, I, I want to first say that I quarantine all my fish. I had him in a 10 gallon quarantine with the same substrate you see now. I've got the medium coarse uh, Argonite sand and I've got uh, crushed coral. Um, so for a jawfish that's like you know exactly what you want. Um, so I got the one from Lava Quarry about two months ago. After three weeks uh, he kind of just started doing like the panicking I'm gonna die in the next two day things where they start breathing really heavy and everything else so uh, he didn't make it so then I got another one from Blue Zoo Aquatics and he lasted about three weeks too and I thought he was really gonna do well and he didn't make it either and the only reason I quarantined is because I hadn't had that much well, I've had zero experience with jawfish and I guess I was just really really worried that if I put him on a display tank, he wouldn't eat. So I wanted to put him in a quarantine to, to mainly just fatten him up. I wasn't so much worried about diseases. I was more worried about just, you know, them starving. Because, you know, who knows how well they eat at the, uh, the uh, tanks from those places we get our fish from anyways that we get shipped here, right? So my theory was that, you know, they come in skinny, fatten them up and put him in a display tank and then it'll take him a little bit you know maybe three or four days and he wouldn't eat and then I was thinking you know well he'd have enough food to where if, even if we went three or four days without eating he'd, he'd build back up his strength anyways long story short those two died um, the other one had a weird marking on him he came in pretty faded um, didn't have good coloration, the one from Blue Zoo. Not that Blue Zoo is a bad company, but that particular fish didn't come in good. The one from Lava Aquaria, same deal. It just didn't look very strong. Um, just, you know, looked like he just kind of wasn't right. Um, this one that came in from Vivid Aquariums, by far, looked awesome. He's got a couple little weird black lacerations on his um, sides of his cheek areas, but I don't know if they're just battle scars or what, but... Um, I'm not worried about them. They look fine. The other one had um, two little weird white patches, and they looked like abnormalities. Um, there's a type of disease it's called. I couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, I mean, I did figure out what I think what it was. I don't know if it was necessarily a disease, but I think that maybe um, something just wasn't right with him. He had these two little weird spots, and uh, even though he was eating well, I just never quite got a warm fuzzy about that guy um, so anyways I put this guy in the display tank and uh, I will show you the quarantine tank he came out of real fast okay so this is the quarantine as you can see live substrate this and that Let's see if we can focus this video better uh, no camera sucks well phone sucks there we go. That's better. So that's uh, what I had. And he never would burrow here. He he never would do much digging. He just kind of hid underneath the PVC pipe. But he was eating. So I waited about oh, about six or seven days of him eating consistently. And then I decided to pull the trigger. And uh, put him in here. 
as you can see, his little den keeps on, the rocks keep sliding down, so he'll be working forever. He had this really nice little setup going, and it just went. But anyways, so I put him in last night. Uh, I, I grabbed him at night. Um, there was minimal resistance. He darted once and tried to jump out, and uh, but then I netted him no problem, and uh, so he wasn't flustered. Since I keep my quarantine and my display tank really close, I didn't even acclimate them. I just, uh, the lights here were very, very dim. Um, so they were almost going out. They had about an hour left. So I took them and I just put them in like a little, um, I have like a little, uh, plastic little half gallon box. And it has a lid on it. And, uh, it slides. The lid slides. So I put them in there, and, and I dropped them where I wanted them to go, which was exactly right here at this rock. Um, so I chose this rock for a couple of reasons. For one, you know, when jawfish start digging, they can cause avalanches, and everything will collapse. And I don't like to glue my rocks together, because I do like to have the, the um, uh, I guess, option to move them around. And I've placed them so that they do support each other very well. However, this rock that he's digging on right now is actually a big piece of rock, but I buried it in the sand. So that's only like a quarter of it that you see. The rest of it goes all the way down to the glass, which I, could, well, I would recommend you do. Some people say jawfish will move around a lot. Um, I think that might depend on a couple of factors of them being scared, or um, if you have another sand sifting fish that messes in the sand, like a you know, sand sifting goby or, you know, some of the gobies or whatever that you might have that, you know, messes around the sand. Um, I think you could run into that issue. Um, but jawfish are pretty territorial from what I understand. And they don't have a problem uh, kicking out people. Or keeping them away from their den. I put this guy in and I fed him the next day and he started eating like crazy. Uh, so I was very, very pleased. Um, I wanted to quarantine him a little bit longer, but I don't think he's sick. Um, I quarantined, quarantined him for two weeks, and he looked okay. So, um, so anyways, yeah, he's doing great. Uh, you see my little Rainford Gobi here. I just like videotaping him. I just think he's a really, really little neat guy. Eh, I can't get a good focus on him. There we go. Yeah. Um, I've got Tanaka Pygmy Rass flying around here somewhere. Um, I'm still looking for him. He's doing really good too. Um, uh, he's pretty cryptic, but uh, he's really healthy and he's in good shape. Um, he spends a lot of time in the morning and in the night hours swimming around. Uh, they're not, he doesn't seem to like, oh, speak of the devil. There we go. Wow, what a beautiful shot of him, huh? That's a great shot. Oh, this is, that was pretty rare. <laughs> he usually doesn't come out like that and just show himself. Oh, wow, this is a good video. Huh. Duncan Coral, it's, it's growing okay. It's doing fairly well. Anyways, so, real quick, let's go over jawfish care uh, I went over to sand bed um, and of course when you're when you're doing a sand bed don't forget to you know you always want to vacuum the sand every so often not all the time but you know every once in a while and you also uh, you know when you're when you're refilling your tank try not to disturb the jawfish's den right because we don't want to mess with that guy huh anyways uh, you want a closed up canopy so as you can see I have a canopy I'm taking this in the dark um, but anyways, I'll open the lights, um, and I have fans back here, uh, let's see, come on video, anyways, I got fans, um, so if he does want to jump out, the only thing that would get him was the fans, but, uh, as you can see, I have sl slats too, and, um, I even put little, uh, screens over that, little mesh material, just, just because I didn't know what size jawfish or dartfish I would get. And, you, you know, you never know. I was kind of afraid they might jump out of those little slats. Um, other than that, 
um, that's pretty much it. You just want to uh, have a real tight fitting canopy. Um, tank mates, we should go over tank mates, okay? So you don't want anybody that's aggressive. You want mainly, you know, uh, gobies, um, maybe some blennies, uh, more like the tail spot blenny would probably be nice. Um, I'm sure some of the dwarf angel fish, like the the um, coral beauty and things of that nature. Um, fox face would be okay, a one spot fox face. Um, the smaller fox faces. Um, I mean, or a uh, rabbit fish. I'm sorry, the smaller rabbit fish. I'm getting my species mixed up here, my names. Um, gobies do good around this guy. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, maybe like a blue assessor, stuff like that. Brassus. Um, blue assessor is part of the basslet family. Um, maybe an orchard dotty back, maybe. Might do okay, maybe. Um, so if, if you're kind of, um, questioning a fish's aggression with a very passive fish. So, um, fish, for the most part, from what I understand, they... They sometimes do do better in communities as opposed to being alone. But when I say that, you know, I mean put them in a community of, of fish they feel secure with, not fish that they think are going to eat them, okay? So, let's say your scenario is you want to get an orchard dotty back, okay? And you're kind of on the fence about it. And you want to get a yellowhead jawfish. And, you know, you kind of read the forums and people are like, well, it's kind of aggressive, this and that. So, the best thing to do is the longer a fish, even a passive fish, is established in a tank, they become more dominant. And, well, they become more secure. So you want to put the more aggressive fish in much later and let the passive fish uh, adjust. Prime example. So I have the scissor tail darfish. They're very passive fish. I think everyone will agree scissor tail darfish are passive fish. When I put this jawfish in last night, the, the dartfish's house is that rock right back in there. So it's basically one rock back where the Bacani rock is with the uh, SPS and to the right. So this dartfish was the first fish that ever got in here about six months ago. And he was quarantined for a while before that. And when the jawfish was building his house last night, the dartfish twice actually went inside of its den and was in there with the jawfish, which blew my mind. Uh, the first time he went in tail first, and the second time he went in head first. And he was in there for a good, I don't know, probably, you know, five, six seconds. Um, and then he came out like nothing had happened. He didn't dart out, he just s slowly creeped out. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's to kind of prove the the, the, the point that you know if you're going to put in a passive fish um, even a passive fish will start to you know grow its confidence and come out you know even Tanaka pygmy wrasses they're very very skittish fish if you read on the forums and stuff like that and oh my god they hide all the time and everything else like that um, I will say mine doesn't like the camera um, but my Tanaka pygmy wrasses is out probably 80 percent of the time it's out swimming it might not be in a direct open but it's it's always in the back making laps going up and down and and it'll kind of it'll sort of um swim within the shadows of things it's very interesting but it comes out uh so you know a lot of this well a passive fish doesn't hide i find that if you have more hiding spots for fish um you know, within also don't sacrifice your water flow and, and having dead spots where the flow can't get to. But if you can have good hiding spots for your fish, I find that they actually spend more time out in the open as opposed to um, them always hiding all the time. So, anyways, that's this video. It's a little bit long. Uh, we just uh, are getting done with Hurricane. Um, what's the name of that hurricane? Matthew. Sorry, Hurricane Matthew, I got a brain fart. Um, we didn't have any serious problems, um, but we were very lucky. Uh, a lot of people where we live lost power. Uh, cars were being flooded. And we're in um, 
central-ish North Carolina, more like central east. Um, and we got lucky. Uh, I couldn't imagine what the coast was like. I saw some videos, and it looked uh, it looked really rough. Um, there was some famous piers that have been around for a long time, like on Oak Island, that got taken away from the storm surges. Um, so yeah, North Carolina, um, we didn't get hit nearly as bad as Charleston. South Carolina and some other places like down Florida, but um, I think it was a little bit worse than people thought it would be. Um, and and it it wasn't really that it was the hurricane, but it was it was the rain. It was just we got so much rain. It um, because the rain just saturated all the the ground and and then the, the older trees just gave loose. Um, and it doesn't take much wind for them to just you know topple on over. So anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, see if we can get a close-up. Probably not. Yeah, I think that scared him. Well. Yeah. Alright. Oh, yeah, there he goes. Hey. Hey, everybody. Alright, talk to you later comment please let me know what you think let me know if you're affected by the hurricane and uh, I'll talk to you later